am Jen Guile with Nginx Product Marketing, and I'm here to give you a demo of our new lab, Protect Kubernetes APIs with Rate Limiting. This lab can be completed either in our browser-based environment where everything is set up for you, which is great if you're less experienced with Kubernetes, or you can uh, take the lab guide and do it in your own environment, or you can do both. So uh, I'm gonna walk you through this first lab. In this lab, which has three parts, first you're gonna be deploying a cluster app API and Nginx ingress controller. Uh, we'll go ahead and start by spinning up Minikube. It does take a few seconds for it to fully deploy. So in terms of the app and API that you'll be using, it's the pod info app and API. And then the ingress controller is Nginx ingress controller maintained by F5 Nginx. Um, you'll use that a single instance to expose both the app and the API. So as you can see, uh, we have side-by-side -side instructions here to keep it easy and self-contained in one spot for you. And we have our mini cube configured. Now I need to create a YAML file that um, defines the deployment. And so it's gonna have that app and that API in it. I'm going to use the text editor that comes with this platform just because it's convenient and right here, but you can use the text editor of your choice. So let's take a look at this file. So we have our deployment here. It includes uh, the pod info front end, that's our web app, and it includes the API. So we'll save that and apply it using kubectl uh, apply. And this shows us that the API was created and the front end app was created. To confirm that they are up and running, we'll use kubectl get pods and we can see the unique ID for both the app or the API rather, and then the app below it. One out of one running, good news. Now it's time to install Nginx ingress controller. Unlike the previous lab, we're going to create a namespace for it rather than installing in the um, default namespace. And then we're going to use Helm to deploy. So we've added it to the repository. If you did the previous lab on auto scaling, you may notice that this is um, a bit longer of a Helm deployment. It has some additional components required in order to do the rate limiting that we'll be doing later in the lab. And so we see Nginx ingress controller has been installed. To confirm it's up and running, we'll use kubectl get pods in the namespace and I can see one out of one running. Now we're gonna create the ingress configuration that allows us to use this ingress controller to expose the app and the API. So again, I come over and I create a YAML file. And let's take a look at what this one includes. So we have our front end and our API and our ingress controller. Save that and apply. And it says that it's been created. Finally, now we're gonna test the configuration to make sure that, um, that the app and API are properly exposed by the ingress controller. So we'll get the service. This shows us the um, IP address for the Nginx ingress controller. And now we're gonna open a temporary pod so that we can check out the routing. So first we'll take a look at the API and this is an API that delivers a JSON payload. So we have the details here. And if we come up here, refresh, there it is. We'll do same thing for our front end app. As you can see, it's not here yet. There we go. And here we see the HTML for our front end app. And if we come over and refresh, we get our happy little cuttlefish. I'm going to close out that temporary session or temporary pod with exit, if I can type. There we go. Session ended. So that is the end of the first challenge. Now that we have our app API and ingress controller deployed, we are going to intentionally overwhelm those services. 
So you're going to use Locust to do this. It's a traffic generator, and it's going to simulate a surge that's going to cause some bad stuff with our, our services. So we'll start by defining the Locust pod. So in this, uh, if you look under these task items, you'll see, we'll pull this over. Uh, this one is for our front end. And this one is for our API. And it has some Python in here, which if you want to take a look at the um, file that it will be, uh, it's uh, reading this, which is stored in a config map. And so it has additional details. We'll save that, apply. It should be up and running. There's Locust. So we're going to make sure that it is actually running with kubectl get pods, and it's not, which is not a surprise. It usually takes a few seconds for Locust to fully deploy. It does have to be fully deployed for the next part. And so you can just repeat kubectl get pods, and now it's running. So now we're going to do our traffic simulation. You'll need the Locust GUI for this. And you'll see that there are um, three parameters that can be adjusted, number of users that are peak uh, using the site at the same time, how quickly they'll spawn, and then the host. So we're going to set this to 1,000 users, uh, spawn rate of 30 users starting per second, and host is the ingress controller. And I've clicked start swarming, and now it is generating traffic. So we can watch it. Uh, climbing slowly here, it's gone up to 240 users, 330. So remember, we said the peak number was 1,000, so that number should keep going up. And what I like to do is go over to the Charts tab, and you'll see um, requests per second and failures in this top line. And up oh, at about right here, 600 users, we started getting failures. I'm going to zoom out so you can see the other charts a little better. So we have our response times are climbing. So that means our uh, customers are gonna be experiencing latency. And if you flip over to the failures tab, we can see that the front end is failing. So what's happened here is so many API requests have gone through that uh, the whole system is getting overloaded. And so because Nginx ingress controller is trying to handle all of those API requests, uh, the requests to the front end are not going through successfully. So that, quick and simple, is our first challenge, or our second challenge, rather. Now we'll move on to our third and final challenge, how to fix this. OK, in this third challenge, we'll zoom back in, you're going to be doing three things. First off, you're going to be deploying two separate ingress controllers, one to serve each service, the app and the API, and you're going to be implementing a rate limiting policy. So let's talk about why you're going to be doing those steps and what that will achieve. So here is the architecture of your original deployment. You have a single Nginx ingress controller directing traffic to two backend items or two services. So by splitting that out so that we have two ingress controllers, one dedicated to each service, that means any um, problems with the API will not affect the app at all. So it'll be completely unaffected by any um, potential attacks you might be experiencing, whether it's a DDoS attack or a mass password guessing, or maybe you're just experiencing peak traffic. Maybe these are bona fide genuine users, but there are just so many requests, they're overwhelming. So it won't hurt your web app, but your API hasn't been fixed yet. And so we're going to fix it by deploying the second Nginx ingress controller to serve as an API gateway so that we can implement rate limiting. So what is rate limiting? Um, that is when you request or uh, restrict the number of users that can make a request in a given time period. So um, typically, you're going to gauge this off of what would be normal for your users, how many requests are normal. And so in order to get that, you may be doing some observation during normal periods so that you can set this. Um, when it's implemented with Nginx, clients who submit too many requests are going to get redirected to an error page. So they're not going to negatively affect that API. Uh, the other term that I use that I want to define quickly 
is an API gateway. Um, there is a common misconception that an API gateway is an actual tool, but in fact, it is a use case that could be implemented by a number of tools. And it's all about choosing the tool that's gonna work best for the use case. And so in Kubernetes, most often that's gonna be an ingress controller, but it can also be a service mesh. And so that's going to let you um, implement a whole bunch of different API gateway use cases from rate limiting all the way to authentication, authorization, SSO, OIDC. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we have to do is delete that original ingress definition because we don't want to deploy uh, one ingress controller to handle both. Now you'll remember at the beginning, we created a namespace. We're going to do that again, except now we're creating a different namespace for each ingress controller. So we have our web namespace and our API namespace. Now we'll install the Nginx ingress controller for that web front end. Uh, it's similar to what we did before. And we see it's been installed. We're going to create a manifest. So again, coming over to our text editor, this is a very simple manifest, very easy to understand what's going on here. You can see there's the front end serving just the single service. And I'll go ahead and apply this. And it's created. So that's the simple part. The more complex part, but still pretty simple, is uh, installing the API namespace so that we'll do uh, rate limiting. So with Nginx, you have two different options for rate limiting. And if you're doing the lab, you can see a little bit more detail here. Uh, the first is Nginx ingress resources, and the second is snippets. So Nginx ingress resources are an alternative to Kubernetes custom resources. Uh, they provide a whole bunch of um, advanced use cases that you can do for API Gateway that are really going to um, simplify and make these configurations more repeatable, more reliable. Uh, you can do them on a finer grain scale. Snippets are certainly an option, but we don't recommend the use of snippets because they are very error prone. They can be hard to work with. Uh, while in the case of this lab, it's a very simple configuration and it wouldn't be hard to do. Imagine if you had dozens or thousands of apps behind these ingress controllers, you don't want to be making uh, configurations for each one. And so going with Nginx ingress resources is just the more efficient as well as more powerful way to go. And so with that, you get um, a whole scope of different parameters that you can configure. Three are required, and then there's some optional ones. So the required ones are going to be the rate. That's how many um, requests are permitted the key, which is telling you where to apply it to, and the zone size, which is the memory zone, the shared memory zone. So let's look at an example here. In this example, we're restricting the rate of request to one request per second, right there. We're using this key to say um, how to apply that one request per second. This key uh, for Nginx is instructing it to do it based on unique IP address. And then finally, here's the memory zone, or the shared zone, shared memory zone. So let's go ahead and create it. We're going to start again by installing it into our new namespace. And it is installed. And now we're going to create another YAML file. This one is a little more interesting than the last one you created. You'll see what I was just talking about in terms of the rate limiting policy here in the middle. And then um, a policy object that's required down here. So we'll be restricting based on 10 requests per second. Save that and apply. Okay, now we're gonna test the rate limiting. And to do that, we have to modify it locust. Uh, we're gonna have to make a couple manual modifications because by default, locust um, only serves one IP address and so, or, or one URL rather. And so we need it to do two. And so what you'll see in this new locust configuration here in the middle are these two separate URLs, one for the web, and one for the API. So we will apply this new configuration for Locust so that it will split to those two URLs. 
you'll see it is configured and the rest of it is unchanged. Now, in order to uh, apply this new one, remember we still have the original one. So we need to reload so that it's pulling this new one. And so what that does is simultaneously retrieves the pods and deletes so that we get a fresh pod. And we'll confirm that it is deployed. And there it is up and running. What you should see is this time will be a very short age. In my case, 11 seconds, which is telling you this is the one that we just created. And finally, let's rerun our simulation. So this time, we'll go ahead and stop, run a new test. We'll do 400 users with a spawn rate of 10 users starting per second. And I'm going to come over to the chart tab and zoom back out. So this is our first test over here. And you can see it just got pretty pretty ugly after we uh, left our test and did other things. It was still running in the background. So pretty much total failures. Here's our new test. And things are climbing as expected because we do know that we are going to be having a uh, massive API request, but take a look down here. Look how nice and flat this is. And let's come over to the failures. And as we see, the only failure we're seeing here is the message that's going to those um, users who are submitting too many API requests that are being restricted by the rate limiting. And so they're getting a 503 server error, server temporarily unavailable for our API. Now this is customizable with Nginx. You can change it to say whatever you like, but that's it, we're done. You have successfully uh, protected your web app from any kind of issues because it's no longer sharing an ingress controller with um, the API. And you're now protecting your API with rate limiting. If you wanna try this out, make sure you register for Microservices March at nginx.com slash mm and let us know how you like it. Thanks.